Okay, hello and welcome to this PHP tutorial series. Um, in this series we're going to be creating a private messaging system. Um, I'm going to be treating this as kind of a mini project type thing. And all I mean by that is that I'm going to be going over pretty much everything, including the template system that we're going to be using and the login system, the user system type thing. And those two things I have covered separately in videos before, but the whole point of the project idea is that I want to show you how they sort of fit together, if that makes any sense. Um, so yeah, mini project. Uh, this was the highest rated video, highest rated video, sorry, the highest rated thingy suggestion on my channel page. So if you want to influence future videos, go there and vote. Or if I've, rem if I've removed that feature, go there and just look at my videos. <laughs> um, yeah. Right. So I suppose we better demonstrate the system we're going to be making. Obviously it's a multi-user system. At the moment we've only got two users registered. Uh, but, well, obviously, you know, in a real system you'd have more. And we'll probably add a few more for testing later on. So I suppose we may as well demonstrate. So if I just log in as me, like so, this page here would normally uh, show a list of conversations that you're a member of. So this is essentially the same as the messaging system on sort of most forums where when you send someone a message they can reply and then you can reply back and you essentially add a whole load of messages to sort of a, a bigger message and this is, then that's what I'm going to be calling a conversation in this whole system series whatever so I think the best way to demonstrate this is just to do a few examples so if I just create a new conversation by clicking that and we send a message to Bob and it's probably worth pointing out at this point that the way we're going to code this you can add an unlimited number of people unlimited <laughs> yeah uh, so there you go um, and all of these people will be added to the conversation so every name you put in here those people will be ab able to add messages so yeah that's how that works um, so the subject let's just use um, testing why not um, and then as the body of the message let's put something clever ah uh -huh, I'm so witty so let's get rid of that and click send and there you go, we get this confirmation that our message has been sent, so we can return to the inbox, and our message, or our conversation, appears in this list of conversations. Um, so just a bit of basic information, and when I was styling this, this is about where I got bored of trying to make it look nice. Um, yeah. Um, so you can see we just have the date of the last reply, um, and then we have a, the subject of the message, which I entered. Also we have this big cross, which is how you delete the message, which I'll demonstrate later on. So if we just view this message, like so, you can see that we have me, and then what I said. If I had something else, uh, let's just say, well, something else. Click Add. See, my new message appears above this one. So, newest messages will be put at the top of this list. Um, I just thought that was the most sensible way to do it, so you have to scroll for ages to read them, and then scroll back up to reply, and then back down to check what they said. You know, this seems like the most user-friendly way to do it. So, if we log out and log in as Bob, who I sent the message to, we can see what he sees. So I log in as Bob, like so. You can see he sees that on his list of messages, the subject and cross um, are sort of bold. And all that means is that there are unread messages in this conversation. Uh, so if we, re if we just open this up, you can see that my name is bold for both of these. And all that means is that these are the new messages that have been added since you last looked at this conversation. So that's probably, I don't know, I just thought that was quite a useful feature to sort of have. Um, I added that fairly recently, you know, sort of in a sort of afterthought really, but it seems like quite a good idea. Anyway, if I just reload the page, you'll see what that means. So if I reload it, they go away because we've seen those now. Okay. So if I just add a new message to demonstrate this even further, so if I, if I add something like uh, Bob, I don't know, maybe I like to say my own name, or Bob does. Um, you can see that my new message isn't bold, which is quite important because you know we've seen this, we wrote it. So if we log out and log back in as me, you can see that this has now gone bold because Bob has replied. And we can open it up and you can see that Bob's message is bold because that's the message that we viewed. These two we already knew about because we wrote them and also because we'd already seen them. So yeah, that is that. Now. All of these uh, message messages are only stored once in the database. Um, you may have thought, or it may, you know, it may have been done this way before in some of the code you've seen or something, that each message has to be stored once for every user in the conversation, um, so that when a user deletes it, um, it doesn't delete the conversation for everybody. 
uh, we've sort of got around that by instead of actually deleting the data when they click delete, we just mark the message as deleted, um, or them opted it, or you know, as they've mark it as they've left the conversation effectively. Sorry, my chair squeaked. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So instead of actually deleting all the, all the data straight away, we just mark it as that they've left the conversation or they've deleted the deleted the conversation from their list, and then our queries um, make sure that nothing that um, is marked as deleted is shown to the user. So I'll, I'll explain this all again once we get to actually coding it, and it'll make more sense then, hopefully. Um, but anyway, let me just demonstrate what that means. Oh, I didn't mean to log out. Well, anyway, let's delete Bob's message. So we log in as Bob and delete that message. So we just click that, the message will disappear. Um, however, all that's happened here is we've set change the value from 0 to 1 in the table. If I log out and log back in as me, like so, this message, message is still here and I can still read it and I can still see Bob's messages. So everything is still there. Um, however, if we go back to my inbox and delete this, that will have now deleted everything from the table. So all of the data is only deleted properly, you know, actually removed from the tables once the last user in the conversation deletes the message. So that's how that's going to work, and I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, so I guess come back for part one, where we'll get on with making the template system. Um, by the way, I should also mention that I'm going to put an annotation link, so top right, uh, that skips all of the stuff we've done before. So it'll probably be about part eight or nine, maybe, maybe a bit less, but whatever. Um, so if you want to skip the login system and the um, uh, template system and just get on straight onto the private messaging part of it, um, you can just click that one, which will be part eight or six or something around there, not part one, basically. Um, if you want to stay for the whole thing, um, then go for part one. Okay, so that's everything I've got to say on this part. So thank you for watching and come back for part one or eight-ish.